Hi guys, welcome back aboard good old Athena for yet more DIY fun. This week we'll start out by applying non-skip to the deck, specifically Kiwi Grip. I also want to get the BMS, the battery management system, hooked up and get that connected up to the inverter charger and hopefully finish configuring the alternator. And then a little bit later in the week we'll sprinkle in some of the other tasks. Kiwi Grip is a water-based non-skip product. It's applied to the deck to make it, well, not slippery when wet. Five years ago I rebuilt the entire deck and then about two years later when I was done painting everything I applied Kiwi Grip to the cabin top. If memory serves it was pretty easy to apply and I even put in a little logo in the Kiwi Grip just for the fun of it. I know it's obscured by all of the stuff that's on top of it but this is what the cabin top looks like now. Because I've been busy with other projects I haven't cleaned the boat for about a year and as you can see this doesn't look particularly dirty. I'm mentioning that because I read online that Kiwi Grip could be different difficult to keep clean and that it got dirty quick. That doesn't seem to be the case for me. I don't know if that varies depending on where you're located, but for me, Kiwi Grip seems to be working perfectly fine. Here's a quick little before shot of the deck. Hopefully by the end of the day, we'll have a bunch of little gray squares on here. I've never applied Kiwi Grip before. So in order to prepare, Mads made me study all night last night. I read all the directions, almost all the directions on the website. Don't tell Mass. No, I did. I read them all and I watched every single video on YouTube, including Sail Life. To summarize, there's a few key steps in the process. Prep, very important. Temperature and humidity, very, very important. And removing the masking tape as soon as possible while doing the Kiwi Grip is very, very important. And cutting corners not cutting corners in the way I wish we could in this project, but actually cutting the corners, making nice round edges is very important. Another important trick is to practice because as you go along, your technique is going to improve. So to get a consistent surface, it's a good idea to practice. And for that, we've got this piece of plywood. I've had these cans of Kiwi Grip standing around for a few years, so hopefully it's still good. It's still liquid and squishy, so all signs point to yes so far. These are the standard rollers you get with Kiwi Grip, but to just play around with it a little bit and see if we can get some other textures, I've also picked up some different rollers from the local hardware store. To apply the Kiwi Grip, we're going to use a three millimeter notch trowel, just like Mess did the first time he applied it. We use the plywood to also practice masking off and cutting nice round corners. The application of Kiwi Grip using a notched trowel doesn't require require any kind of practice. There's basically no way to mess it up. It's easy and straightforward. For the fun of it, we used three different rollers for our little test. We'll show you those a little bit later in the video, but they did yield slightly different textures. It seemed like the standard Kiwi Grip roller was the one that was easiest to work with. Highly motivated by our successful test, we set to work. It would take about 12 hours until we'd finished applying Kiwi Grip. Almost half of that time was spent masking off and making rounded corners. Dividing the deck into sections looks spiffy. It also makes it easier to apply Kiwi Grip because you're focused on a smaller area but it does mean having to put down two layers of tape between sections so you can remove one layer when you're done with the first section and then the next layer when you're done with the neighboring section. To create the rounded corners, we used a giant washer and then ran an X-Acto knife along it. Ava did a great job on the corners and they turned out absolutely beautiful. Surface prep is important. We gave everything a light sanding with 120 grit and wiped everything down with alcohol. It took us about six hours to apply Kiwi Grip. It's definitely a good idea to be two people. It boosts morale, makes it easier to keep a wet edge and also makes it a lot easier to remove tape in those hard to reach spots. The deck is starting to look pretty dang spiffy. Applying Kiwi Grip is not a super fast process, but it is straightforward and after a few minutes of practice, it is possible to get a consistent texture. We both fell asleep the second our heads hit the pillows. The next morning we got the first glimpse of Athena's new spiffy looking non-skidded deck. Ava designed the pattern and she also cut all but a few of the rounded corners. She did such a great job. I think the non-skid looks absolutely amazing. An 11 out of 11 on the spiffiness scale. Once the wooden tow rail is installed, Athena is gonna look like a million bucks. <coughs> For Hilvel i Satandaos. I just made not one but two really, really stupid mistakes. First, I managed to short out the BMS, so that's totally toast, the BMS for our lithium batteries. 
And I also then managed to delete about half a day's worth of footage of me talking about the BMS and the lithium setup. The only bit of footage I've got is the footage I shot after I managed to wreck the BMS. So yeah, this might be slightly confusing, but here we go. In case you're curious, this is what the inside of the BMS looks like. Or specifically, it's what it looks like after you have completely effed it. I don't know about you guys, but I certainly prefer my BMSs nice and charred. This is, without a doubt, the stupidest mistake I have made in years, and I am very annoyed with myself. Not so much because of the cost of the BMS, well, it is expensive, it's like 800 bucks or something like that, so that's annoying but also because the place where I purchased this is closed for summer vacation and they won't be back for about a week and a half, so we can't get a new one. For anybody else setting up this BMS, I can show you exactly where I messed up. This list is the culprit. So I started from the top here. This is the connections you need to make to the cells. So cell one ground, cell one positive, and so on. I started from the left-hand side of the connector and worked my way towards the right. But you're supposed to start from the right hand side and work your way towards the left. Let me show you the right way, the way this is supposed to be. This is the connector and out here on the far left hand side is cell one negative, then cell one positive, cell two positive, cell three positive, and so on. The order of this list is what messed me up, but had I been paying closer attention, then right down here in the instructions is this little drawing which neatly explains exactly how you're supposed to connect the wires to that little connector. The instructions even mention multiple times that you're supposed to check the polarity because if you get the polarity wrong, you can wreck the BMS, which appears to be true. The reason I didn't catch it was because I was checking on the connector and everything on there looked correct, but it was just the orientation of the connector that was wrong. On the back of the BMS where you connect that connector is even a little symbol that indicates cell one negative. I couldn't see that because I'd already mounted the BMS somewhere where I couldn't really see what I was doing, so yeah. The instructions are very clear, it's just that list that kind of messed me up. I don't know if the order of going from right hand to left hand side with numbering of pins is some kind of industry standard, but yeah, that's what messed me up. But this is 100% my fault. The instructions are nice and clear. It's just me that's a giant moron. Other than my stupid and very costly mistake, things are moving along in here. We've got the Wi-Fi module for the BMS. The BMS used to sit right there. We've got a shunt down there, the negative power bar, and then over on this side, we've got the positive power bar, pre-charger for the BMS, contactor, and a class T fuse, a 400 amp one. Don't worry about this mess here, that's a part of the temporary 12 volt setup, but uh, yeah, I went through all of this in great and painstaking detail in the footage I then later deleted. Once the uh, new BMS shows up, we'll uh, go over the BMS, the lithium bank, the setup and the integration with all of the Victron gear we've got. This is of course extremely frustrating because I covered all of that in the footage I deleted. Thoroughly annoyed with myself, Ava and I got started installing the trim in the shower. I cut the pieces to length and broke the edges to not have them be so sharp. The purpose of this trim is to look nice but also to protect the edges of the shower entrance. Next morning we met my parents up at the workshop. We want to be out of the workshop by the end of the month. That means there is a lot of stuff that needs to go to the recycling center. Ava and I had already sorted most of the stuff into categories like metal, cardboard, wood, and so on. With my parents' help it only took about four hours to get rid of most of my junk. It's been a couple of days since we applied the Kiwi Grip. It is no longer tacky at all, but it is still a little bit soft. By soft, I mean I can kind of push my nails into the peaks still. I think that is perfectly normal and it should hopefully cure fully over the next couple of days. I tried walking on the Kiwi Grip earlier and that seemed to be perfectly fine, so let's go ahead and get started installing the tow rail. All the way along the deck hole joint, I've got a bunch of little brackets. Those are what we're going to be securing the wooden tow rail. To. Yesterday when we were at the workshop we ripped the wood for Athena's tow rail to size. This is the stuff right here. It is Epai. I think that's how it's pronounced. It's also called Brazilian Walnut which is a lot easier to pronounce. From a distance this does look a little bit like teak. If you get up close not so much but this stuff does have a couple of big advantages over teak and that is availability and Rice. This stuff is commonly used for decking or outdoor decks here in Denmark, so it's very easy to get. Almost every hardware store has it, and in terms of price, it is a fraction of the cost of teak. But it's not really the be it be all 
all wood for a project like this because it is also a little bit heavier than teak and a lot harder. The harder is kind of also good because it makes it more durable, but it also makes it harder to work with. If you're wondering if this stuff will last, well here in Denmark, typically for outdoor decks, they say 30 to 40 years. If it's well maintained, then you can easily get 75 years. So yeah, I see no issues with using this stuff. And if we do have issues, it's going to be super easy for us to replace this. The wood simply just get through bolted through these little brackets and that's it. So replacing it is not going to involve any kind of sanding or fairing or anything else that's going to be labor intensive. It is just a few nuts and bolts. To make the end caps look nicer, we've got these little doohickeys. I want to put that in so we can move this line so we can start fitting the tow rail. Very nice and tidy. Let's go ahead and get started installing this tow rail. The very first thing we did was to round over the corners. I used a six millimeter radius, which is not that much, but it makes a huge difference in both looks and not having something sharp to bump your toes into. After getting the aft section aboard the boat, we drilled holes and prepped the middle end cap by sealing with butyl around the bolts and smushed it in place. Ava held the bolt stationary up on deck while I turned the nuts down below. We used little spacers between the deck and the wood to maintain the same gap. Then it was just a matter of marking and drilling the holes. Installing the tow rail was a little bit time consuming, but it wasn't tricky. And by the time we got to the port side, we had figured it out, including sliding the wood into the middle end cap and then forward into the forward one, and then using tiny taps with a hammer to line up the holes. The only really fiddly bit of this process was the backs of the end caps. It's a very tight fit and required wedging up the wood and tapping the backs in place with a hammer. Ta-da! Here it is, Athena's new tow rail or mini bulwarks as I've also referred to it. I think it looks amazing and I really like the end caps. I think they make the tow rail look pretty dang spiffy. If I was to change anything, it was to maybe make the tow rail a couple of centimeters higher. Not from a safety standpoint, it's already 10 centimeters high, but just for looks. It took us about nine hours to install the tow rail both sides. If we ever need to replace the wood, I think we can do it a lot faster than that. Practice makes a big difference. We're not completely done with the tow rail yet. For instance, we still have to put the backs on the aft end caps here. And the same goes for the back up here because we have to lead a cable from some nav lights down through there. And I wanna get that done before we put the back on. But other than those two minor things, the tow rail is done. In terms of protecting the wood, I did spend a bit of time thinking about whether or not we wanted to seal it completely or just oil it. And considering how easy it is to replace it and the longevity of this wood, I think we're just going to start out oiling it. And if we don't like that process, well, then we'll switch it up later. From a safety standpoint, it's certainly nice to have the tow rail, but our tow rail here will also work as a little bit of a rub rail, meaning it'll protect the hull from any kind of damage because this wood is just a little bit proud of the surface of the hull. I really like that aspect of the design because I'd much rather have to replace these pieces of wood compared to repaint the entire side of the hull. Something else I really like about this design is how easily water is going to be able to drain off of the deck. It's not going to have to go to some kind of scupper and then overboard. It's just going to go straight overboard. Why not go with an aluminum tow rail like you see on most modern boats? Well, primarily because of cost. With the way Athena's deck is constructed, I'd have to have a pretty high aluminum tow rail and those are expensive. I got a quote for, I think it was 5,500 US dollars. That is a lot of money. This tow rail cost me less than a thousand US dollars to make. Also with this design, there is no combination of aluminum and stainless. It's all just stainless and wood. And that means no corrosion. So this should last, well, for a really, really long time. The Kiwi grip on the deck looks really great. It's just a little bit rough. So we saw online that we can sand down the peaks. So we're gonna to try that. However, in the cockpit, we want something a little bit more smooth. So we're going to try a different method up there. Everything here in the cockpit is all masked off and ready to go. The technique we're going to be doing is called rolling hills. You first do a thin layer with a regular roller, and then you go over with a second layer with the kiwi grip roller. In order to get the rolling hills effect, you dilute the kiwi grip with 10% water. Here, we're going to be doing two tests. This one, we're gonna do a thin layer with the regular roller and the Kiwi Grip roller. And then here, we're gonna do it with just the Kiwi Grip roller. Here we've used a couple of different techniques as Ava described, but it seems like what determines the texture 
is not so much the roller, but more the amount of Kiwi Grip that's on there. We have almost no texture here, some texture here, but no sharp peaks, and then just uh, something in between the two over here. It does say on the Kiwi Grip website that the thicker you put it on, the more durable it is, and the thinner, that it's more likely to get stress cracks. Ava's doing a great job out here in the cockpit. We have been experimenting a little bit, and we have decided to not do the unthickened layer first, so we're just using the 10% thickened Kiwi Grip. We don't know for sure, but we suspect that the reason for the unthickened coat first is to prevent any kind of paint from printing through, so you can see the color of the white through the gray, but it seems like the gray stuff is covering it just fine on its own. The plan for today is to do one half of the cockpit, because we can't walk on this for a couple of days, and we'll still need a way to get into the cockpit, so we'll have to do that side next week or the week after. Ta-da! I am just loving the way that the Kiwi Grip turned out. There's texture but no sharp points. It's nice and smooth just how we wanted it. Over the last couple of days we've made some samples as you've seen and it's become clear that you can get many different textures from using Kiwi Grip. These are the ones from earlier today. This is the one that's closest to what we've got in the cockpit but these are the ones from earlier in the week. There's this, which is closer to what we've got up on the deck. Then there's this guy, which is kind of a droopy mess, but still kind of a uniform texture. And then this guy over here, which is kind of not so coarse textured. We learned a few things through this process. For instance, because Kiwi Grip is a time sensitive thing, it's good to have two people. One person to be the globber, another person to be the roller. And it's also nice to have two people when pulling up the tape, just so tape doesn't fall into the Kiwi Grip. Not like that's happened. It's also good to do it on a cloudy day or in a covered area, especially when we did it the other day, it was nice and cloudy. We had more time to roll and get the texture, but today the sun was beaming down and we could see that it was drying a lot quicker. And everybody meet, tape bucket. This became our best friend throughout the process. It's good to have a bucket and not a plastic bag, which we did first, and we tried to put the tape inside of it and it got stuck and it just quickly became a big mess. So it's good to have a bucket so you can just rip off the tape and put it inside. Especially after what we've seen today, it seems like to get a softer texture, diluting is the way to go. We haven't really had much luck using different rollers to get softer textures, so for softness, dilute. This may vary from person to person, but I think using a notch trowel isn't the best way to go. It creates lines in the Kiwi Grip and you have to use the roller to work the lines out, which is working the material and you kind of get a varied texture. We didn't use it in the cockpit and we seem to be able to get a much smoother and more even texture. And for the moment of the evening, everyone's been waiting for... The to-do list! Yep, there are some tasks we can move into done. There mm -hmm. is mount the tow rail, that's a big one to get out of the way. Yep. We also have trim for head, that yeah. is done. We're also done cleaning out the workshop. And that's not all, ladies and gentlemen. We also installed the rope clutches in the cockpit. There are also three tasks that we've gotten started but not completed yet. So for instance, none skip the deck and the cockpit. We're really close to being done, but we still need that last half of the cockpit. So we're not really done, so it goes into doing. Mm -hmm. We also have headliner and saloon and head. We have those cut, but they're not fitted yet. And then last but not least, we have the BMS, which uh, it's all wired. We just need that new BMS. Speaking of the BMS, I emailed the manufacturer, and even though the reseller where I purchased the BMS is on vacation, the manufacturer is going to send me a new BMS and then the reseller is just going to charge me when they get back from vacation. That means the new BMS should arrive Monday so I don't have to wait two weeks, which is awesome news. As you can see, things are chugging along. We're making good, steady progress. Yeah, and the BMS hit us a little hard earlier in the week, but seeing the Kiwi Group done and the tow rail has given us a lot of motivation. Yeah, and it's really nice with motivation. We still have a lot of tasks we need to close. I predict we're going to be able to leave Denmark in mid-August, which would be perfect, but uh, yeah, fingers 
crossed. Next week, we're going to be focusing on tasks that require the use of the workshop because that's our last week at the workshop. So there's some stuff we want to finish, like for instance, the drawer fronts. We've got some plywood up there that we need to use. And also we've got some sales and other stuff we need to move aboard Athena. So there should be plenty of exciting stuff coming up next week. We hope to see all of you guys back here aboard Athena for yet more DIY fun. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. See you.